Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna back with another video of Hasna's Anatomy. Today we're going to study the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve, which are the terminal branches of the sciatic nerve. So let's go ahead and get started with the tibial nerve. What is the origin, course, and termination along with its branches? So the tibial nerve is basically originating from the sciatic nerve at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa. So if you guys remember this entire diamond shaped structure that I've drawn is the popliteal fossa. So the superior angle of the popliteal fossa is where the tibial nerve and common peroneal nerves both begin. Let's talk about the tibial nerve first. Now tibial meaning tibia. Now tibia you all know that whenever we talk about tibial, anything related to the tibia, it is going to be medial. And when we're talking about the common peroneal nerve, it can also be called the common fibular nerve. Fibular meaning anything that's lateral. It's exactly like your upper limb. When we talked about ulnar, it was medial. When we talked about lateral, it was radial. Similarly, tibial is the medial here and fibular is the lateral. So the tibial nerve is more medial. However, it has a more straight course in the popliteal fossa. It originates from the sciatic nerve at the superior angle. Its root value is very important. The tibial nerve arises from the ventral divisions of the L4, L5, S1, S2, S3, their ventral divisions arising from the sciatic nerve. Its course is that it runs from the superior angle of the popliteal fossa all the way till the inferior angle of the popliteal fossa and it is the most superficial structure of your popliteal fossa. And it does not terminate, it continues in your leg. However, we're not going to study about the leg right now because we haven't started that chapter yet. So the tibial nerve is basically going to give a couple of branches which are quite important. So the branches are always divided into categories. Let's talk about it first. The cutaneous branches of the tibial nerve include the medial sural cutaneous nerve. Now keep this in mind because the medial cutaneous sural nerve is going to merge with the nerve that comes from common peroneal nerve to form the sural nerve. Now what is the sural nerve? The sural nerve is going to supply the lower half of your back of the leg and the lateral border of the foot up to the little toe. So the cutaneous branch includes the medial cutaneous sural nerve. Moving on, it gives muscular branches. The muscular branches given by the tibial nerve will supply the muscles of the leg including the gastrocnemius, the plantaris, the soleus and the popliteus muscle if you guys remember a muscle of the popliteal area. The muscular branch that is going towards the popliteus muscle will in addition also supply the tibialis posterior. So overall we have the gastro being supplied by it, the soleus, plantaris, the popliteus. And with the popliteus, the nerve that is supplying the popliteus is also going to supply the tibialis posterior, a muscle of the leg. So do not forget this point. And finally, it also has genicular branches corresponding to those that the popliteal artery gave. So the genicular branches, however, the genicular branches that the tibial nerve will give will be the medial, obviously because it's tibial nerve. So it's like superior medial genicular nerve, a middle genicular nerve and an inferior medial genicular nerve. The middle genicular nerve is responsible for supplying your knee joint. Now let's talk about the common peroneal nerve. It originates from the sciatic nerve. Its root value is the dorsal divisions of the L4, L5, S1 and S2. And the common peroneal nerve begins at the superior angle of the popliteal fossa. However, this is going to be a little different. It, it goes from the superior angle to the lateral angle of the popliteal fossa. All right. After that, the course of common peroneal nerve is that it, from the lateral angle, it runs downwards to the posterolateral part of the neck of fibula. Now, this is important because you can actually feel this, uh, you can palpate this nerve at the posterolateral neck of the fibula if you try to feel it. After that, this nerve pierces the peroneus longus and terminates into its terminal branches called superficial and deep peroneal nerves. So that was the origin, course and termination of the common peroneal nerve. What are the branches it gives? Almost corresponding to the tibial nerve branches. However, there are some differences. It has obviously the genicular branches and in the case of common peroneal nerve, these are going to be the superior lateral genicular, inferior lateral genicular, recurrent genicular nerve. Because the middle genicular nerve has already been given, a recurrent genicular nerve will be given by this. The recurrent genicular nerve is responsible for supplying the knee joint and a very important muscle, the tibialis 
anterior muscles. So now we know that the nerve to popliteus muscular branch of the tibial nerve was responsible for supplying the tibialis posterior. However, the common peroneal nerves recurrent genicular branch was responsible for supplying the tibialis anterior. So this is an important point. Then we have other branches including the cutaneous branches. The cutaneous branch, the first cutaneous branch is known as the sural communicating nerve. The sural communicating nerve is that nerve now that will bind or merge with the medial cutaneous sural nerve and these two together they form the sural nerve. All right? And it also gives another cutaneous branch called the lateral cutaneous nerve of calf. Lateral cutaneous nerve of calf is responsible for supplying the skin of the upper two thirds of the lateral side of the leg. So the lateral side of the leg in its upper part is being supplied by the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf. Moving on, it does not have any muscular branches. That is also a very important point of the common peroneal nerve. The only muscular, close to muscular branch would be the recurrent genicular which is supplying the muscle tibialis anterior. Otherwise, it does not have any exclusive muscular branches. And finally, important point is that if there is any kind of damage to the common peroneal nerve, mostly it is damaged in the posterolateral neck of the fibula or due to any dislocation. Problem resulting from that is known as the foot drop as you cannot evert or dorsiflex your foot. So that was all for your tibial and common peroneal nerves. And we have finally covered all the contents of the popliteal fossa. I really hope you understood the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.